What's up guys, it's Jim with Awaken TCG, bringing you guys another Locals video this week. And this week, if you cannot see on screen already, we have a blue Boa Hancock that ended up winning the poll, squeaking it out right over Foxy, but unfortunately it's looking like Foxy is going to be the winner for next week. But this week, um, Bo Hancock won, so I could have easily played this deck myself. Um, it's a really fun deck, but I thought the better option would be to let my buddy Colin play it, who has been featured in a couple videos on the channel already, since he is all in on Bo Hancock this set. Definitely knows how to play it way better than I would ever would. And uh, to top it off, the whole deck is completely altered out, looks absolutely gorgeous. But that being said, let's go ahead and send it off to Colin to explain the deck list. All right, all right. So Boa is taking advantage of the Warlord package of the set. We're basically Dofi. Like it's Dofi's more aggro, uh, whereas Boa's more a little bit more control. But we go fully into the Warlord package. So we go four lovely Sengoku searchers. Um, it's just honestly our best searcher. Uh, um, the who's you can't run who's who animal kingdom's not that good navy's kind of eh it's just sengoku searches out absolutely everything in this deck um i didn't count but i'm sure we're well over 20 targets which is what i would say is the bare minimum or um the good amount you want for a searcher so you're almost never missing um but what our sengoku searches is three or four of three cost doflamingo blocker i mean baseline multiple videos i've played in or are done for them uh we run four of these i ran four of these in um in my ivankov list i run four of them in croc in set four you run four of them it's just the premium uh three cost blocker that rearranges your top five and now we have some goku to search for it so it makes it even better you like um, to go first right so uh first you can't this deck can go first and second uh, first, you want to see this uh, most of the time, but surprisingly, a lot of the 07 cards that came out make our second curve way better than it used to be. Uh, Blue's second curve used to be really bad, but now we have access to some Warlords that honestly make us... like it, You'd put us on first and, hey, we're going to do really good. Or you put us on second and now we're going to fall behind because we don't have Miahawk, we can't play... Um, we don't have a good eight cost to play. We don't have a good six cost to play. We don't have a good four cost to play. But most of that has been fixed now, which means that our deck does really good going second as well. Um, now we hit into the 2Ks. We just run Kayas. They are really good 2Ks. Premium blue 2Ks. They work really well with our leader effect because um, this makes you go minus one in hand because Boa wants to be at five cards or less. Uh, Kai allows us to go minus one and draw two, which allows us to cycle and possibly find what we need to find. Um, just obviously an amazing 2k, we, so that's why we run four of them. We run two four cost Mihawks, uh, searchable off Sengoku, a good four on play. It cycles as well because we run a lot of bricks in this deck, you'll see. Uh, and honestly, you need some way to get these bricks out of your hand. Because if you get seven, eight, nine bricks in your hand, you're never getting your leader effect off. And then you're basically screwed or locked up the rest of the game. The next 2k we run is three of the Law 2k. Um, I like this 2k a lot. Uh, I was just trying to find slots for more in the deck, so that's why I only run three of them. Um, this 2k, all it does is you can play it. And then it has an activate main where you bounce it back to hand. If your opponent has six or less cards in hand, or six or more cards in hand, they bottom a card from hand. Uh, what you can do is you can play it, and then if you have four cards in hand, you can bounce it back. Now you have five cards, they bottom a card from hand, and then you draw. Because you pulled it back to hand, you have your 2k in hand, and now you can use leader effect to draw. Because Bo's effect isn't just removing your opponent's stuff from play, it's moving yours. Bounce effects, bottom deck effects, anything like that. Um, so we're able to basically draw two times a turn if we see the right cards, which is really nice. Yeah, that's an interesting spread. I, I know a lot of people prefer the Mihawk just for the 5k stat line when that's your only target off Jinbei, but, you know, uh, do you just feel laws a bit better? Uh, I was running four Mihawks and two laws at a time, but I also run four of this 2k as well, and this one's just a better 4-5. Sure. Um, Mihawk's effect, you have to attach a Dawn, and then it has to stay on the field and stick. 
Uh, Croc, you can just pay a down, tap it on, and then bounce a two drop or less back to hand. Um, it's just, I mean, it's a four or five like Mihawk, except for like it has an effect that does something right away. So it's it's better to play, and this allows us to do what I run was this nine nine Warlord two Ks because you're normally playing these off um, Jinbei or recurring them off Moria. So, I mean, you could probably load up and do. 10 of these so you run one more of these or maybe you swap these over it's whatever you want to do honestly it's just find more ratios than what you like um but the reason we run all these four drop 2ks as well is because we run recursion moria this card i would say kind of makes the deck run i hate to say it but you probably need four of this card um the reason for it is because if hypothetically let's say uh, we're going second, right? And then they swing on their three dawn, they swing six, right? You can pitch a 2k, right? And then on your four dawn play, just play a Moria and then recur that 2k. So you didn't even waste a 2k and now you get a four or five body as well. Um, it's, I mean, it also picks up the Dofies, it picks up those, and it also picks up the other 07 card that made our deck a little disgusting, Jimbase. So the reason our going second curve is so good now is because of gym base. Um, you're able to, on four dawn, develop two things. And if on four dawn, those two things are uh, gym bay recursion Moria, that 2k you pitched in the early game didn't even matter. Now you have two four fives and you have a 2k back in hand. Um, you can do gym bay into a blocker if you need to. If you need to protect yourself, that's not a bad play either. Uh, you can do gym bay into the law. And then you develop a 4-5, you can bounce the law back to hand, draw off the effect if you need to draw off the effect. There's, there's a few, uh, I would say, niche plays you can do with it. Uh, we can't abuse it nearly as much as Blue Doe Flamingo can, but this does make our deck run, this Warlord package. And it is amazing. It helps out in so many matchups. The next thing is just a 2 of tech choice. Just two puddings. Um... I was running four for a while, but I ran into the issue where you're only ever playing pudding one time a game most of the time. And if you're yeah. drawing two cards a turn or you're playing Doflamingo, you're going to see the pudding. There's, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is probably the best card in certain matchups against like Black Gale, Luffy, and Bonnie. Um, but you're only ever playing it once. Like you develop your board. And then you, Bonnie has 12 cards in hand. You hit her with a pudding, and it's like, all right, now I'm going to go for a game after that. You don't need three of them. You don't need four of them. But if you want to see more of it in certain matchups because your locals are look, looking a little different, go for four of them, honestly. It's just obviously a tech choice. We don't have a ton of... Jimmy, we don't have a ton of Bonnie players or Black Yellow Luffy players in our locals. I think we only have, what, one yeah. Black Yellow Luffy yeah, regular and then one guy that's kind of iffy on Bonnie. Yeah, um, that's about it. Yeah, so it's basically like I don't need it, and against Anel, I'm not really like this wins the Anel matchup too. But we got one or two Anels, and my decks are already kind of tech to play against Anel, so I'm perfectly fine with only running uh, two puddings. Then we have the other thing that made our going second disgusting is I'll put it over here six drop Boa Hancock. Now this card is absolutely disgusting and i'll stand by it. it is a six eight vanilla stat line which on play stuns something and then you could like stuns anything that isn't a monkey d luffy card lore wise if you don't know why you don't know why it's just, it is what it is but you can basically if they play a 10 drop you can go boa stun that 10 drop it can't swing and now you're all good to go for the next turn you're probably completely safe they're not going to swing 12 at you uh, the other benefit is it bottoms a one drop as well. It stuns something and then bottoms a one drop. It doesn't need to bottom your opponent's one drops. So this is why we run Kaya's and we run these Sengoku's. What it allows us to do is I can play on seven dawn. I can play a Kaya, uh, go through two cards of my deck, trash two, and then go, okay, cool. I'm going to play Boa. I'm going to stun something. And then I'm going to bottom my own Kaya and draw if I'm at five or less cards which gives me a little bit of a tempo play and keeps my hand up. <clears throat> in Dofi, it doesn't do that because obviously they don't have Boa's leader effect, but this card is a four of in this deck. I 
would not consider going down to three, two, or one. It single-handedly wins matchups most of the time if you can drop it late game. Oh, sorry, I didn't even talk about that. Yeah, th this is searchable. We got four searchable targets, four, four, three, two, four. Like, obviously, this whole deck's basically searchable. Yeah. Uh, then the final searchable card, this is just a tech choice because of specific people at our locals. It's a one of searchable nine cost Mihawk. Most people hate this card now. It doesn't really hit too many. Um, seven drops in the meta. Most cards are eight. Moria's an eight cost. Isho's an eight cost. Like, uh, Kid's an eight cost. The reason I specifically one run is purely due to the fact that it's searchable. And at one of our locals, we have some Foxy players. So it hits the seven drop Foxy. It does really good into Rage You. It helps me re re remove Ichiji so I don't have to kill them or bounce them. I can bottom deck them and then be safe a few turns. It's just the one of tech choice. You literally can remove this and add another 2k or add something else. No one's going to fault you for doing that. It's honestly not that great of a card, but I like it just because of our locals and it's shiny. The next thing we got is I run two 10 drop bounce Kaidos and three draw Kaidos. The reason I run this is most Boa lists will run two and two or they'll run three and one or they'll run four and zero. It's completely up to the way that you play. If you feel yourself playing a little bit more defensive against like a Nell, these are way better. If you have some Bonnies specifically in your, what you call it, in your locals, Bounce Kaidos are way better. They perfectly invalidate um, a drop kid turns. Uh, I like a five Kaido spread purely due to the fact that I want to see these more often than not. And we're playing for the late game anyway. I'm delaying drawing two Ks countering out stunning stuff bottoming stuff just so i can get to these turns once i get to these turns i can develop big 12k bodies draw this will bounce an eight and a three you can draw off the bounce and then this just draws you four cards so both completely valid strategies they're both good in specific points um this one just works really well in our leader effect because it's bounce an eight cost and a three cost and then draw a card same with the mihawk it's bottom of seven and draw a card if you're at the right uh, amount of cards in hand. Our big bodies is what we're playing for. That's basically it. We are a late game deck. Um, and then finally, we just have the event spread. I run three Red Rocks. Uh, I was running two. Four is completely fine. It's completely up to you. Uh, this just helps me win the Anel matchup a little bit. Bonnie... Uh, bottoming their eight drop kids or their zoros or their 10 drops that's what it helps you for um overall just a six dawn to remove anything which is completely valid run as many as you want to run then we have four gravity blades this is disgusting at our deck it is bottom two sixes draw a card it wins us black yellow luffy it wins us bonnie most of the times because this is a way we can remove the uh the six drop Hawkins. A lot of decks struggle to remove that, but we can swing with everything and then bottom, bottom the Hawkins. Um, what else? I I mean, there's most against Dofi, bottom two sixes against a Boa Mirror. You can bottom their six drop Boa and then another thing like it's, it's just the premium blue removal card. That's all it is. Um, there's not it's much broken. else to say, but it's it's broken. I mean, people hate it, but it's like the <laughs> only, it's the only like really crazy, crazy, crazy good blue event card honestly um because yellow's got rigo now as well so yellow can remove whatever they want and then we got just two zero drop events i messed with my ratio specifically to add these because i am running what if we look at it four seven and eight, 10 11 12 13, 17 yeah 17 bricks again if my hand gets maybe one of these two of these one of that one of that in it I'm screwed for the rest of the game until I can play that. I'll never be able to use leader effect. Um, so this just helps us turn those bricks into one case. That's basically what it is. Um, not much else to say about it. Bo is just extremely, it is a slow control deck. That is all it is. You are reacting to what your opponent's doing and you're outvaluing them because they'll play one card. You bottom it. Now you drew for turn and you're drawing off your leader effect. So you should be able to outvalue most decks. That's all Bo is. All right, really great deck profile, but let's go ahead and get right into our games this week. 
All right, and getting into game one here. We've got some blue on blue action. So we're going to be playing against Doflamingo here, which is honestly a very similar deck to Boa. Obviously a little bit more heavy on the four cost Warlords. We do run them in Boa, but Dofi is going to be basically building the whole deck around that and then sprinkling in, you know, the Gravity Blades, the Puddings, the Kaidos, all the good blue stuff. So very similar to our deck list, but also different at the same time. So let's see who comes out on top. He does get the pudding on his first turn as we play a delayed Sengoku, unfortunately drawing it not on turn one, but on this turn. And as it is our only play at the moment, since you really don't have any three down plays other than three cost uh, Dofi blocker, we're actually going to play that and Akaya and filter out this hand since we really do not like it too much. Bunch of 2Ks and a lot of big cars. We're going to get rid of the pudding and the 10 cost Kaido here. And pass back. Dofi is going to play out the Jinbei into Weevil Nuts combo. That is the best uh, two cards you can get in this situation. And he had it. So this is going to be a bit hard to come back from. So we're going to go 6k into Jinbei. He's going to give us a 2k. And then going to play the Croc here. I was actually talking to Colin about that play. And I think it would have been better to go 5 the Jinbei. And then use the 1 for Croc to bounce the Kaya to hand. But uh, let us know in the comments if you, what you think was better for sure. He's going to go 6k with the Weevil to lead. We're going to give him a 2k. He will go 7 with the Jinbei, we will take that, and he will go another 7, playing out a 6k Moria, and we have to take that one as well, as he follows it up with another Perona, ensuring that he gets leader effect once again on the next turn. We are going to 7 Dawn, which means, as you can see in the hand right now, we do have the Gravity Blade, which means we can remove two things off board. Little too many cards in hand at this point to actually draw off leader effect, which kind of sucks here, but... Obviously, it is going to still be the play, so we will go 5k to 5k, trying to get a card out of hand. He'll give us a 1k Prona. We'll go 5k once again. He'll give us a 1k Moria, and that is going to be the Gravity Blade bottom decking both of his 6k characters as we pass back to him. Opponent now on 8 Dawn. Um, if we are using Leader Effect here, we actually only have 5 Dawn to work with, so let's see what he chooses to do with that. He'll go 7, and we will choose to counter out. And he's going to get another Jinbei Weevil off of the Doflamingo effect. So really rough here into a 3 cost Dofi, setting up next turn as well. Unfortunately, I do not have another 7 cost event in hand at this point. Um, he is completely overwhelming us, uh, swinging while developing the best bodies you can. And still drawing cards off of Weevil um, is really hard to beat. But let's see if we can somehow clinch it out here. We do not have the best board at the moment since all we did last turn was a Gravity Blade. So we're going to go 5k into the Gene Bay. He's going to give us a 2k Trafalgar Law. We will most likely attach a little bit of Dawn here to go into this Gene Bay. Um, we do have the Boa Hancock, I think, is really our only play this turn. We're going to do 5k into Gene Bay. He's actually going to block, which is telling us that out of those three cards in hand, none of them are most likely counter. So we're going to go 5k again. Uh, we read that correctly. That's going to be the KO, and we will play the 6 cost Boa, locking the uh, Weevil, and then bottom decking their Perona. So as you see, we put the little heart on there just to signify that is Boa effect. Um, honestly, really cool little charms to have if you play a lot of Boa Hancock. So he will actually choose to go 6k to lead. We'll give him a 2k counter as he goes 7 with Dofi, not using effect, and then choosing to use his remaining 7 Dawn to bottom deck our two characters, Boa and Croc, unfortunately for us, uh, putting us in a very rough spot. Opponent does pretty much have no counter in hand, and um, only three cards as well. So there is a scenario where we can clinch this out, but it is going to be very, very difficult. Um, if we do play the 10 drop Kaido, we can only bounce one of those four drops. The four drop stat line is just a bit too awkward. So we'll go 5k into that Jinbei there. And then I'm going to spend 10 on the Kaido, bounce our Kaya back to hand and bounce his um, Weevil back to hand and draw ourselves one. So pretty solid turn for us actually. And it's he chooses to do another Jinbei Weevil once again here. And I'm go going to actually Red Rock our Kaido. And with that, I would pretty much say this game is kind of a wrap. If you don't have a blocker in this situation, it's going to be pretty much impossible to win. 7-drop um, event here would be really good. Unfortunately, we don't have it. We're going to go 5k into Jinbei um, and another 6k with Sengoku. As we do play the Bow Hancock, stunning the Weevil. So his leader is the only one that can attack here. 
However, if he just goes face, um, he's basically guaranteed game unless we draw a blocker. Even then, Weevil stays on board, so going to be hard. He's going to go five, which is always going to mean, yeah, the 10 drop Dofi there and drawing himself four. Um, now in a rough spot, right, you kind of need to red rock that. That's the only way to get rid of it in this deck. And it looks like we do not have it in hand. So we're going to actually play the pudding. Um, turn that draw four into a... Uh, I think he would he had seven cards in hand or so, so this actually is like equivalent to trashing two. Not too bad. Um, gonna make him draw five cards once again, and then we have a remaining six on, so gonna figure out what to do with that here. We're gonna go 7k to leader. He's gonna choose to take that. Uh, gonna go another nine. He goes down to two. And we will actually play the blocker do flamingo. However, at this point, with him having three swings on board and us only having two cards in hand. He can actually just get a math win here if he goes nine uh, twice, but he's going to make it easy for himself. Bottom deck both with the Gravity Blade. Um, going to go six to lead. We'll give him the 1K, um, and now it's just 8-12. That is a guaranteed game from our opponent. Definitely an unfortunate game one, but let's go ahead and pick it up getting into game two here. Our opponent has a custom leader, but if you can't tell, that is just going to be OPO5. Oh, as he flips it over. OPO5, Purple, Luffy. So, very interesting matchup that I would say is probably pretty heavily Boa, Boa favored. Um, as they do take life, we can do stuff like Pudding if they get too many cards in hand, or, you know, Red Rocks for anything big they play. Seven Drops are really good in this deck to get rid of, like, Magellans and stuff. But opponent's going to go five on a three, and then ramp to four. And I should play an Ein, which is a really interesting card to run in this deck. However, they are already on uh, seven Domics, so which is going to be really scary. As we do play the uh, Jinbe into Moria and actually grab that counter back to hand. So, fantastic turn for us. Opponent's going to go 7k to lead. We'll definitely take that as he goes another 5k to lead. Definitely want to counter out of this if we can. We'll give him that 2k law as he just plays the kid down. Um, not really that threatening of a card at this moment in time, especially if we have the 7 cost event. So, we're just going to go 5s. Hope he blocks so we can actually swing into it afterwards. Um, we're going to play the Sengoku for one here. Looking at the top five with five Dawn remaining. A um, couple of good options, but we're just going to go ahead and grab the three cost of blocker right now. And going to go ahead and attach one to lead. He's going to give us another 2k as we spend four Dawn on a Jinbei into that Doflamingo we just searched out. Setting up our draws next turn is very, very crucial for sure. And I think a 7-drop event would be really nice to have here if we don't already have one already. But opponent now on 9 Dawn. Um, looks like he has a lot of 2Ks in hand, though. You can play that Poly, but uh, it's not the strongest play in the world. He is going to go for the Poly, ramp himself 1, and most likely, yeah, pop the active Jinbei, which is the correct target here. And from here, definitely just going to go into board. He'll go 6K into our Jinbei. We'll give him an easy 2K. Another 7k into the Jinbei, and we'll just choose the block. You know, rather have the 5k on board we can attack with than a 4k that we're just going to leave on board for another turn. So, going to go a little bit aggressive here. 5k to lead with another 5k to lead. He's going to take that one. And another 5k to lead is going to give us a 1k. Already very long cards in hand for our opponent. As we do that 7 Dawn event and pretty much just seal this game out for us. Um, as we do drop the Sengoku afterwards, getting a Boa Hancock if you were ever even going to think of playing anything big. So he's actually going to leader effect because he literally has nothing to play. And he's going to go ahead and play the 5 cost kid, which without Don Minus effects really doesn't do much. Um, really unfortunate turn for our opponent, but if you look at his hand here, that's really all he could do. Um, and now on us, we have 10 Don. We're going to do the Tenkaido, bounce the Sengoku and his kid, draw ourselves one and swing five twice. Pretty much a no-brainer turn for us and kind of going to seal the deal as if it wasn't already. Um, I don't really know a card that can actually bring our opponent back in this situation. Um, even if you had like a 10-drop Luffy, like you can't win the game. 10-drop Kaido, or sorry, 9-drop Kaido doesn't do much here. Um, so he'll go six, we'll give him a 2k counter and he will drop... Body's on board here, hoping and praying that we cannot end the game this turn and he has a chance to win on the crackback. So we will go 7-2 lead with Moria with one card in hand that is uncounterable. Unless you wanted to block with Kid and give us a 2k, but he's going to choose the take, which is probably correct. We'll go another 7. He's going to do the zero cost event and save himself a life here. Going to go 12, thinking about giving us the blocker right now. 
but I'd say it's probably right just to take the life um, and then try to swing back into his board. It's really the only play. We do have six on remaining, which is definitely going to mean, yeah, the Bo Hancock is going to lock the page one. After our opponent takes the life, down to one in hand, and another situation where you really just don't have much to do. This might just be a scoop from our opponent, in all honesty. Um, there's just not, uh, there's really no plays at this moment in time. Two cars in hand, uh, and they are both 2Ks. That do not do anything. Uh, your only play this turn is to pretty much swing big into Kaido. And yeah, that is exactly what he's going to do. Uh, and that is a double 2K from us. Uh, which means this is going to be a wrap. We'll go 12 lead. That's going to be a block. Rest on leader. And that is going to be the game. So a really rough game from our opponent. Honestly, uh, had a bunch of 2Ks in hand. Not a lot to play, unfortunately. And getting into our final match here, going into NL himself, which is definitely a menace of a leader this set. Bit of a slog fest this game. It is pretty long, so go grab some popcorn. But this is going to be a very, very fun match. So we're going to go five to lead on our first attacking turn, following it up with a three drop Do Flamingo, which is pretty much always the best play on three Dawn here, setting up our next five draws. And looking at this top five, it's kind of a bunch of 2Ks, a Kaido and a Red Rock. You definitely want to keep that because the Red Rock is just really strong, um, into NL at least. Um, so we're going to go ahead and keep that and then pass back to our opponent as he plays an Okiku on four and swings five. Going to counter out there just because, you know, you want to keep a kind of low amount of cards in hand just to be, be able to activate leader effect. So we will go 6K lead. Opponent's going to choose to take. And we'll follow it up with a Moria grabbing back that 2k that we just gave him on the last turn. So, nothing crazy from these turns right here. Opponent's going to be on 6 Dawn. If you had like a 6-8 Momonosuke, that's probably Anel's best play at this moment in time. However, you are playing right into a Gravity Blade as well. So, maybe not. Um, opponent's just going to choose to go a little bit aggressive here. Swing 8-2 leader. And it looks like we actually get a Gravity Blade trigger bottom decking that Kiku, which is really, really rough for him. But, you know, you're playing in now, a little bit of taste of your own medicine. He's going to go 9 to lead, and we are definitely going to choose to take that one. And now on Subadon, uh, you know, we would love to use a Gravity Blade, but there's nothing on board. So, just going to go ahead and play a raw Boa Hancock and not swing into him, which I think is probably the right play because... You know, if we did, there's a possibility he gets a trigger into, like, maybe a Katakuri on this turn, which would not feel good for us. And he does have that Katakuri in hand, so once we see what that life is, let's see if that would help us out. But uh, he's going to play the 7 Mom here, kind of punish us playing slow, as we're going to actually uh, give him a life for free, but put him up to 3, and then countering out of that 6k swing with a 2k. Now on um, 9 Dawn for ourselves, um, if we do have the 9 drop Mihawk here, it's actually really good, but it does not look like we do. Um, gonna swing 8, he is going to take that one. And then dropping the Red Rock on the 7 cost Big Mom does not feel great. You'd definitely rather reserve that for like an Ace or a Yamato. Um, obviously, there a Yamato is only 1k more, so it's not that big of a difference. We still have another Red Rock in hand, so... It's not the worst play ever, but pretty much the only one we had that turn. Um, but leaving the opponent at two life here is going to make these Yamatos not heal anything. So opponent's going to choose to do Godatsu and pop our three cost blocker right now. And from there, um, probably, yeah, just going to swing into the bow at 10k, forcing us to give him a 2k and a 1k. So really slow game here, kind of just ignoring each other's lives as we drop the 10 cost Kaido right now, bouncing Godatsu and drawing ourselves one. And not going to attack once again, which is really good for us because we are not allowing to have any value. If you want to Raigo, right, you got to trash a life. But he's actually going to play the Flampe to avoid doing that. Really, really smart play by him. So question is, does he play the Yamato or does he play the Raigo? And it's going to be the Raigo, which I think is probably the right play. Just getting that Kaido off board as soon as you can. And with a remaining, um, what is that, 4 Dawn uh, here, uh, he's going to swing 9. I think that was a little bit of a miscount. Because he played a Flampe and a Raigo. Um, that should have only been AK. But um, I don't really think it mattered. We probably would have taken it anyway. I'm going to swing 5 to his leader now. Uh, since he's at 1 life, you kind of force him to counter out of these. So we'll counter out of both uh, 5k swings there, it looks like. And then we'll swing uh, another 8. Um, and he's actually going to counter out of that one as well. Um, 
At this point, I'm going to drop four for a Jinbei into a three drop blocker Doflamingo. Looking at this top five and seeing if it is viable to actually keep for the next few turns, and looks like it's not. We're actually going to choose to bottom deck that as we're going to just play a Boa. Bottom deck the Flampe and draw ourselves a card. So just going wide on this board and kind of making it in the situation where um, he really needs to start getting life or you're just going to lose the game. So it's going to be the Yamato, pop our blocker and heal one life. That was definitely the best play for our opponent. And going to go 6k into the uh, Rested Moria. We'll give him an easy 2k and pass back to us. So we do have the Red Rock still, which means we can get rid of this Yamato and kind of just play it slow if we wanted to. Or we can go a little bit aggro and put some pressure on our opponent. But I think it's always going to be play Red Rock. I don't think there's any uh, debate there. Um, opponent definitely playing a little bit more of a rush aggro build with that rush ace. So we'll go 8 lead. Just kind of check the hand. He's going to take that. Um, if that is an Onami trigger, which it is, it's going to pop our Jinbei. Very unfortunate there. Which is why you always want to swing with your lower costed characters first against an L. Because stuff like that can really punish you. So... We'll go AK with Boa. Um, looks like he gets another trigger here, and it's going to be a Shirahoshi. Yeah, you're always going to activate that one. Drawing three and getting rid of these two Katakuris that he really just doesn't need. It would be pretty nice next turn. Um, at least now that you have the Shirahoshi on board, but we do have the Yamato, which um, I don't even know if that feels better. Um, so he's going to actually counter out of the five uh, K swing that we do with our leader, and then we're going to actually drop the Kaido. And just kind of develop a body here to be able to compete on this next turn. If he, Even if he heals one, he's in a really rough spot. Because if he wants to Raigo, he cannot heal one. So he is going to choose to do the Yamato. And if he does swing with this one, we can kind of just play it slow. Um, and uh, not even swing into life this next turn. So looks like he's going to go 5 to lead first just kind of check it out and then going to follow it up with probably a 10k to boa that is going to be a 10k to boa we do have the counter going down to two cards in hand but at this point with the red rock and dawn we can pretty much take this yamato for free and the other one with the red rock so gonna go nine we get a 1k out another nine to yamato we get a 2k out and then the last two here on Kaido, going to go a 14k to Yamato, does not have the counter for that. Dropping the Red Rock on the other Yamato and drawing ourselves a card. That is pretty much going to be a wrap there. I don't really think you're coming back from that, especially since still at two life, these Raikos are going to trash a card, which is really rough. He does have the Flampe in hand once again, so if he does want to do the Flampe into Raigo, that is still a play. Um, I think he wanted to go leader there, right? Because if, if he if he could have done that, um, he could have played the rush ace this turn uh, and gone for game, right? And we might not have had the counter. So I think swinging to board for him there was not it. But he's actually going to play the ace and then swing into our boa, 10k into boa. We'll give him a 2k and a 1k once again. Putting him in a very rough spot. So looks like he's just going to go 7k to lead and we are going to take. So at this point... Um, we can either play it slow still, go for board, or we can try to go for game, which is a bit of the riskier play. So yeah, definitely going to go for board. He'll give us that ace right away from an AK swing. And probably going to just, yeah, drop that 10 cost Kaido, draw four, uh, stall it out here, and not even going to put him at one life because we know our opponent wants to Raigo. And if we do put him at that one life, Raigo is going to be free. Definitely do not want that. Um, if he did have another rush card here, it's a little bit scary. We just drew four, so... But they could have been bricks, which is definitely something that happens a lot in this deck. Um, but at 10 Dawn, it doesn't actually look like he has anything to heal. If he had an ace here, it would probably be pretty decent. But he's actually just going to go 15 at lead. Not really much to play. Didn't want to trash the life with Raigo. Just kind of going to hope these triggers save him, and he can go for game next turn if we do not have a blocker. Um... And at this point in time, we actually have another 10 drop Kaido. So if you if we wanted to play it slow, I mean, that would be a little too slow because he can go 15 again, which is very, very risky for us. So we're going to go 5 lead, check the hand. He gives us a 2k, which shows us he does not have any 1ks in hand. Going to go 7k to lead again here. Does have the double 2k, which you kind of need to give right now. And then all of our last four swings need to hit right now. So... No counter in hand. We're going to attach one to Boa. Um, actually, we are not. We're just going to go eight. He's going to take. No trigger. We're going to go nine. Going to take again with no trigger. Going to trash that Kata and heal one. This pretty much needs to be a Bage. Uh, Bager bust. Uh, is it a Bage? Nope. It is an ace. 
which means rest on Kaido, and that is going to be the game. Very, very fun game for us. Very, very long, though. And that is going to be the video, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again to Colin for playing the, and piloting this deck for us. This is his main deck, this set, so I figure he, you know, he goes to our locals every week. Better he plays it than I play it, because uh, not only is he a lot better at it than me, um, he's got all the alt arts. <laughs> Which, uh, by the way, look amazing. The alt arts in this deck look awesome, especially that 10 drop Kaido SP. That alt art is sick. But uh, as far as Boa goes, if you guys like Boa, um, let us know in the comments because I would love to make some sim videos. This deck looks like a lot of fun. Um, we did decent today. Colin ended up going two and one. A bit of a rough start against that Doflamingo. Uh, definitely hit the nuts on us early with multiple Jinbei into Weevils. Uh, I don't really think there's any deck that can beat that. Um, uh, Dofi High Roll is just really rough. As for Bo herself, though, very fun deck. Pretty much just the best of blue. Um, adding the draw power to a monocolor blue leader was very strong. Our best monocolor blue leader before this was like Blue Croc starter deck. So when Bo got revealed, very, very good leader to Blue's addition and arsenal and just kind of getting the best of the color into a leader. So really, really fun stuff. But that is going to be the video, guys. If you have not, go ahead and check out, check out the poll on our community page for the leader that we're going to bring to locals next week. And it looks like it's pretty much unanimously going to be Foxy. Um, not going to lie, I'm not looking forward to playing Foxy. Uh, I've tested out the leader really not that fun um in my opinion don't don't kill me guys but i'm gonna do my best to find a list that i'm happy with and i am confident in uh i'm gonna be piloting it on the next thursday so look forward to that anyways guys though i've been talking for way too long you guys have a great day this has been jim with awakened tcg and i'm gonna head out of here peace